Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies. But this is Bart, not Scott. Scott is not here, although you can see his rookie photo. But I usually attach a theme to these quick hitters at the end of the year. And oftentimes it's remembrances of the year or whatnot, but this was an interesting year, which had to do with Scott because he retired from the police department. I have not. I'm still there. So, um, it served as something for me to recollect back because I've known Scott for, I think it's 26 years now. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a blind quick hitter. So I'll keep this quick, but I'll spend a little bit time on the story. And the story for this one is going to be um, our first police ride. So when you, we were just made new partners, 1996, and you don't know how that's going to go. It's kind of like a marriage. The, the movies, the, the TV shows, matter of fact, Adam 12 is perfect. They get it right. The, uh, partnership in the car, um, is one thing that Hollywood gets right. And I think that's one reason they go back to it oftentimes too. Um, you are literally, we were spending eight hours a day, three days of the week together. So that's a ton of time. And if you don't get along, whoo, it can be brutal. So first, let me get to some tasting. I'll add a little bit of water and then we'll, I'll come back. And some of you have heard this particular story, but for those that haven't, I will recover it. And then I'll be much piffier on the intros for the other seven stories, the seven tales of Scott. Ooh, I like that. The seven tales of Scott. I think it's seven. Maybe it's eight. Hmm. This smells like a very nice, ah, boy, a very nice scotch. So I don't know if it's bourbon or scotch or world whiskey or an American single malt. I get just a touch of smoke in there. It's really light though. Um, huh. So almost like it could be something from the Highlands. Sometimes I'll get a, like a little Highland uh, heathery kind of peat. But I also get this beautiful uh, malted barley character that almost like a rising dough. And there's some different baking spices in there as well. And again, something that comes back to almost be a little bit of char but smoke so maybe it's char and not it's a real light peat if there's peat in it all right let's see what she tastes like mm. wow okay definitely getting peat it's almost like a bomore peat for me bomore is an ash wood like burnt charred wood peat. Hmm. So, but what else could it be? So I get a lot of wood influence here. Hmm. Maybe a touch of tobacco as well. A little bit of iodine, but it's really light. This I'm kind of telling you that it feels like an Isla, but it seems so much lighter than an Isla. Now, they have sat in here for a while. I just saw there was some black writing on here, but I couldn't make out what it is. I get a little bit of sea salt. Hmm. All right. If I were going to guess, uh, I don't know. I'm going to say it's either some kind of heathered peat from the highlands, or I'm now that I'm tasting it, it feels like a more... It feels like an isla to me, just maybe because of that sea salt, but I could be way off. Let's see what it is, and then I'll tell you the story. Huh? Talisker 18 year. So there's a couple things to this. So Talisker um, is a peated whiskey. And uh, the other interesting part is an 18 year, I usually like my peats young. The longer the whiskey sits in the barrel, um, from what I've experienced, the more the peat kind of settles out. And I believe the longer it's in the barrel for me, the more, I don't always pick up those wood characters, but I'm picking up a lot more of a dry, ashy wood. 
Nice. And I like Talisker, but it's more of the regular Talisker. This one, I'm getting a lot more of the burnt wood ash in there. So, we now know that's a Talisker 18. Still good flavor. I like that sea salt. So, the quick story of the first time I worked with Scott. Not met, because we'd been on the same shift for six months. He'd been on, he's on a little bit longer than two years than me. Which is actually a sweet spot when a cop working in a rough, busy area, which is where we were, that works there for about two and a half to five years, usually that's the sweet spot. You'll have a cop, if they're hitting on all cylinders, they're hitting on them there. They're still beat cops, they haven't hit a specialty yet, it's not like they're in a special unit or undercover or anything else. That's when things start to kind of evolve and change a little bit, but a real good beat cop. Um, you do have your exceptions that have been beat cops for years and years, but um, they're still young. Um, they, they are fully competent, usually by that point, good beat cops, and they're hitting on all cylinders. So Scott was. We get assigned to each other. We're riding an area called 46 Beat. They've changed those geographic locations several times, but to give you an, uh, an idea, it was the smallest or Close, second smallest in the entire city as far as a geographic beat. The smaller your beat, the more intense the calls are in the area. So you're, you've got less geographical area, but it's hot. It's intense. In 1996, our beat, um, our bureau, or our section, I think is what they call us at the time, it's changed since, was responsible for 50% of the mergers that were going on in the city. And our beat out of six other beats, so six total beats, was number one for murder. So that, that means one of two things. Either we weren't doing much, not the case, things were kind of out of control, or they put us into a hotbed of activity and we were just trying to keep up. And that's really what more, more it was about. Um, but we get assigned. I remember we walk out of the building, our car, I still remember it was parked on the north side of the parking lot. Uh, Scott gets in to drive. When you're senior, you will drive as long as you want to drive. It kind of bugs you when a new person doesn't quite know where to go or hasn't been to that address for their 18th time and you know exactly where it is and how to sit up on it. So he gets in to drive. I get on the passenger side. As soon as I get in and close the doors, he turns, looks at me like this, says, let me get a couple things or three things straight with you. He says, I love the Denver Broncos. <laughs> now, we were in Kansas City Chief territory, but little did he know, I had moved to Wichita from Denver. I grew up in a little town in the mountains called Evergreen. So I go, man, I'm from Denver, and I love the Broncos. Always great. And he was like, what? Yeah. And he goes, number two, I love Star Wars, and I don't mean a little bit. I mean a lot. I even collect the figures, leave them in the case as a collector, and save them. I'm like, I am a total Star Wars fan. I don't collect the figures, but I still got the ones I had when I was a kid. And he's like, woo! And he goes, I like to smoke a cigar now and then. I go, I hate tobacco, got contacts, don't smoke around me. <laughs> and he was like, what? And I go, that's it. And that kind of set the tone. We had synced on two, and on the third, I wasn't shy. I was like, boom, don't be smoking that around me. Now, he did talk me into trying some nasty Swisher Sweet. Didn't go well, not a fun day on patrol, and we were off and running. So there is story one. We have a Talisker 18, and we will return if you like to hear these stories of back in the day, and we'll move all the way kind of through our careers based on the stories I've written down here. But that is, what did I call it? Our uh, first ride, the beginning. And I like to call it same but different. Um, we discovered we're extremely similar, but I'd say only about two thirds of the things. It's the one third that kind of keeps things interesting. <laughs> scotch it, you scotch gods.